We are pleased that you have joined us here for L. Ron Hubbard's Pulp Fiction Suspense Thriller, If I Were You. Fittingly, it was a dark and blustery night when the professor died. The summer storm had come yelling in from a scorching afternoon to tear at canvas and yank out stakes and stab bright fury at the big top. Someone was coming up the aisle of the car, and then the doorknob rattled, and little Tom Little entered the stateroom. Water ran from his tiny poncho as he took it off. Behind me I shall leave my books. They are ancient and rare, and most of them in mystic languages. But I have translated many of the passages into English. These volumes contain the black lore of the ancient peoples of the East. Maisie, I've got it! It was all she could do to repress a sob of despair. As gaily as she could, she answered, What is it, Tommy? The solution! I said today I was never again going to be a midget. Well, I'm not! Tomorrow, tomorrow, I shall be ringmaster of the show! Her alarm was real, but she masked it. Maisie, look at me. No! Maisie! Do you love me? Oh, Tommy. And then she felt a curious chill, a feeling as though she'd risen several feet above herself and now hung suspended over her body in the air. But in a moment, she was again in the bed. It, it takes practice, said Tommy, beads of sweat upon his brow. Look at me, Maisie. Please, Tommy, for the love of the God that made us. And she again felt that chill, that feeling of lift. Terror struck at her lest she were blind and deaf. But in a moment, she could begin to see a little and hear the big cat snarling far off. With a start, she found herself gazing not at the dressing table from the bed, but the bed from the dressing table. Ahmed, for the love of heaven, don't stand there sulking. Give me my letters and let me go. Mrs. Johnson dimmed the wagon. There was no hurry to her movements, only vengeful promise. If I interrupt your tryst, said the governor acidly, Forgive me. No, no. You don't understand. I am afraid that I do. The only sound in the stillness was spots in the big top, for the show had already begun, and that gay blatting of brass was much out of place in this atmosphere of murder. Jerry Gordon's bronze chest heaved, and his great muscles corded and uncorded as he gripped his blank gun and his whip. When I'm done with you, we'll see who was right. Tell me what you think is wrong. You know already, if I did. Would I ask you? You devil! You steal my wife and then you've got the gall to throw it in my teeth? 